Hey, Gregory, did you ever want to join the circus when you were little? No. Oh, I did. I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to fly through the air with the greatest of ease on a flying trapeze. I wanted to fly, yeah, but yeah, the circus would be the place to do that. Where are you getting at, Veronica? <laughs> well, today uh, we have a returning guest, and she is going to be talking about um, one of her famous relatives, the Flying Nesbitt. <laughs> yeah, well, I heard legendary, and I want to one day be considered a legend, so I'm excited to hear about you know, this legendary figure in, uh, my wheels are going to be turning how I'm going to create my legendary status. All right. Well, uh, if everybody will stay tuned and you stay tuned and we're going to all find out how to create our legendary status and find out about the flying Nesbitt. Mm -hmm. Legend in my own mind now. <laughs> on the Veronica Harris Show. <laughs> Robin Ebb back with us. Um, if some of you will remember, she was with us when we did the Double Dutch show. Yes. And you are now the group director for the DC Retro Jumpers. Correct. Right. So that's refreshing the memory for all of those out there. Hey, Robin. Hey, Gregory. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, I, I got a lot of uh, likes about my, my jumping rope. <laughs> Thanks to you. Oh, yeah, Thank it's you. still Thank up you. on our, fir our Facebook page. Yes. Cool. People can check us out. You taught him how to jump because he didn't know how. He didn't? guess I know now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, he did, and you taught him. But anyway, that's another story. But now we want to talk about your father, Mr. Russell Nesbitt. Yes. Unfortunately, he has passed away, Correct. but he was known as the Flying Nesbitt. Correct. The group was. The group was known as the Flying Correct. Nesbitt. Okay. And um, they performed in various places, um, as uh, they've even pr performed at one time at the um, JFK Center. And the Universal Soul Circuit. Universal Soul Circuit. They even performed with Gladys Knight and the Pips. Yes. Um, they even did something with the Harlem Globetrotters, right? Correct. All right. So, yeah, he, he and the group and you were yes. all over the place. But they, he, guess where they practiced? They didn't practice inside. Where they practice? They practiced outside in a traffic circle <laughs> on, 50, <laughs> on 50th Place in Northeast. Do you know what 50th Place in Northeast is? No. I'm like, where exactly is that? In Lincoln Heights. Northeast area. Okay. Yes. Okay, Lincoln Heights. Lincoln yeah. Heights, yes. So, didn't they stop traffic, you know, being out there in the traffic? All like the that? time, all the time. And they, but they knew who he was and they uh -huh. knew what he was doing. So, yeah, it was, they was looking forward to it almost. All right, well. Why did he have to practice in the traffic circle? That's just where a place where he knew he was going to get a spot in the spotlight. So that's how he started creating that legendary status. He went somewhere where everybody would see him. Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. Okay, now you got him thinking. All right. So why don't you uh, tell us more about the Flying Nesbitt or the group the Flying Nesbitt? The group the Flying Nesbitt, my dad came from Statesville, North Carolina, mm -hmm. and, and, and him and his wife and his son came to D.C., and he ended up in Lincoln Heights. Mm -hmm. That's where I was. And just one of the kids who he had been noticing that could do flips and do all his tricks and stuff, just being an active, uh, active kid. Mm -hmm. He noticed something in me and said, well, oh, I'm, I'm going to see if, if I can get her on my, my double dust, not, not my double dust team, I'm sorry, my acrobatic team. Mm -hmm. So um, before I know it, I was doing shows. Um, I didn't even know that I had the talent to do the things that he wanted me to do, but mm -hmm. he kept asking me to come back and invite me to different events. And before I knew it, I was one of his main um, members. Now, what came first, the double dutch or the acrobatics? Oh, the acrobatics. The I acrobatics. started that when I was one. Oh, oh goodness <laughs> gracious. That's how I was. Yes. So do you find that, um, or how has the acrobatics played a role in your double dutch with the double dutch? Oh, just keeping me active, just being um, limber. Mm -hmm. to be able to do some of the things that people wouldn't be able to do normally in a, in a jump rope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, just keeping me moving, keeping me interested in doing things outside of just talking on the phone mm -hmm. or, or being with my girlfriends. Mm -hmm. I didn't even want to be with my girlfriends. I wanted to do the acrobatics. You wanted to do the acrobatics. Mm -hmm. Now, was he at the height of his fame before or he recruited you? Yes. Oh, okay. He was already... He, was, uh, he had done this 20 years prior to me even being born. So okay. he was on the, um, the, I might be saying this wrong, but the, the Ted Mack Amateur Hour. So mm -hmm. he had been doing that 
way before I was even born. So, yeah. And gave you a little shine that he brought you in. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. I was trying to give you some credit for it. his stuff. <laughs> no, but you say no he was give it all to there. him. He was already there. So, okay. what um, the Flying Nesbits were known for specializing in the Risley Act. Risley. 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 Act. So, what is what is that? Describe that for us. Risley pretty much is when some when a, when a person takes another person and flips them up in the air. Mm -hmm. So that that in itself is Risley. Okay. Yeah, so I did a lot of most of my stunts were Risley stunts where he he would take me and flip me up in the air. I would do two flips and do something else. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people weren't able to do that type of stuff. Now, the Risley, now you say he would flip you would he flip you from, would he be standing when he would flip you, or would he be on his back? When he, he would be on his back, so with, his, with his feet extended up. Okay, mm -hmm. sort of like an inverted pike position. Correct. Okay, and mm -hmm. he would flip you up. Yes, I would, well, one of my main stunts was uh, um, I would be blindfolded, mm -hmm. and he would throw me up, and I would sit, him, sit, on, sit on his lap, mm -hmm. and then he would throw me up to a foot to foot, so my foot would be standing on top of his foot. Oh, okay. And then I would lay down, mm -hmm. And then he would flip me again. I would do another stunt. And he mm -hmm. would flip me again. So all of this stuff that I was doing was Risley. Okay. Yeah, you have to see it. It's almost like Cirque du Soleil. Uh huh. If you've ever seen them, mm -hmm. it's very, very similar. Were you scared? Not at all. Never. Not a, mm. Never at all. Never. Never. Did you ever fall? I didn't fall, but I was. I had fell asleep, and they had woke us up, and uh -huh. we had to hurry up and get to mm -hmm. doing the show. And I guess I was half asleep and half mm -hmm. woke, but I didn't get hurt. But it shocked me. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to shock you. Okay, well, it, you said you started, you started doing the acrobats when you were one years old. And you, that, that reminds us of our, um, one of our little nieces. Yeah, we got a niece of an acrobat. Yep. She's an acrobat. And I can remember from the time, I think when she could crawl, or even by the time she could definitely walk, she spent most of her time upside down. Yes, me too. You spent your time <laughs> upside down? I'm like, she spent more of her time either walking on her, hands. she walks on her hands, yes. and spent upside down more than she's right side up. Yes. But she is constantly flipping. So, and speaking of walking on their hands, one of the things that uh, Mr. Nesbitt was known for was walking down the 889 steps of the, the Washington Monument. Monument. Yes, that was before me, but yeah. <laughs> what possess, did he ever tell you what possessed him to do that? Like, why? <laughs> that was him. He would always do things that nobody else would even think about or, or would just always seem like it was difficult. Mm -hmm. It wasn't for him, as you can see, mm -hmm. but he would always do different things, different, mm -hmm. different, different things. That must be quite a lot of, like, focus and balance. I mean, 889 steps, that's a lot upper of... Upper body. I mean, we will forget the <laughs> upper body, but, you know, just people trying to walk up the monument. I mean, that, that, the monument in and of itself is 555 feet tall. I mean, now, that's a lot. As I'm listening to it, I'm thinking about the, uh, the physical demands, For like sure. you said. Um, and I was thinking, okay, what, what, how would that correlate? to uh, fitness. I know core strength would be a lot a lot involved. Mm -hmm. So you all well, always had a flat washboard. Always. Right? Now did you like say I got to do a, <laughs> uh, a thousand sit-ups a day or just the activity just gave you strong enough? Absolutely. You didn't, didn't have to condition or extra training at all? No, not at all. Because most of the, the stunts either dealt with other people being on top of you or, mm -hmm. or you just being able to handle your own body strength. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So and it probably wouldn't, like, to do those stunts, I would have to, like, do them and have my core work in, the, in, that, uh, in that activity. I couldn't, like, strengthen my core doing sit-ups and then have the type of strength that would allow me. You, you wouldn't need to do your, your warm-up or your, your, your core warning because the, the, the stunts that we were doing would pretty much do what you would do as, as a warm-up or, 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 or to do, like, when you would... Um, train. Think about it like this, Gregory. <laughs> if, like, for instance, you know, the function of what it is, think about the function of what you're doing. Like, right. And what does it set up actually, you know, yes, you may strengthen it, but in terms of getting it, you know, at that, in the condition where it can perform the actual stunt or the actual yeah. job that it's required to do, really you get that from actually doing the job and doing Correct. it over and over, over and, and over, over again. And over Absolutely. Over again. Yeah, perfectly right. You know. Functional training. Yeah. That yeah. It is. Functional. You know, what about the pikes? I, huh? What about doing jackknife pikes? Well, jackknife pikes, but, but that is a function That's that you do. One of the things That's do, one of the huh? movements, like yeah, a pike jackknife. The, the guys were really good with the pike. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't. I, I could do all the contortion stuff, but mm -hmm. they would do the pike stuff. And I found that to be very difficult, though. Mm -hmm. But I was able to do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, Lauren got a little washboard 
Yeah, me. I'm a, what's your ass look no, like? No, we ain't talking about my. What's your ass? <laughs> what's, your ass like? what's your ass look like? Like a washboard. No. Okay. <laughs> but anyway. All right. Well, we are about to get up against the break. And um, when we come back, we're going to find out a little bit more about the Flying Nesbitt and Mr. Nesbitt. But we're also going to talk about, because like I said, you're part of the group director of the DC Retro Jumpers. You guys have been away, <laughs> far away. And we want to talk about where you've been, what you did. You say we up against the brick already? Yes. Oh. Time flies. Hey. Like the Flying Nesbitt. Yes. <laughs> ah, we'll be right back. The legendary Nesbitt. <laughs> It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. And we're back with our lovely guest, Miss Robin Ev of DC Retro Jumpers and also of the group The Flying Nesbits. Yes. Wanna hear my takeaways from the first segment? Okay. I gotta get in. I gotta get a hit. I gotta get out in traffic. <laughs> so I wanna be legendary, get seen, and then I'm gonna do a lot more functional training. Hold on. Gotta go functional now. The okay. The second part I'm all with. Gotta go. Functional. However, to anyone out here listening, looking at our show, listening to our show, however you take in our show, we do not <laughs> condone you going out into traffic to become legendary. Okay, please make sure what they say. You know, professional closed course professional driver. Don't do that, okay? <laughs> Leave it for the professionals and stuff like that. We hey. don't want anybody going out in traffic. I mean, if you don't risk your life, man, how you gonna be legendary? You know what? This is bad. <laughs> the sad part is he has a point. Okay. Yes. <laughs> he has a point. Anyway, speaking of risking, not that you risked your life, but your group <laughs> recently went to Russia. Yes. As a, to demonstrate or to, I guess, I don't say demonstrate, but to, uh, I guess, spread the word about Double Dutch. Absolutely. How did that come about? Well, we were in the newspaper in the Washington Post mm -hmm. in um, October of 2017, mm -hmm. and the, the embassy, the, the founders from, emb from the embassy. The happened, Russian embassy? The, the American embassy. Okay. Happened to see the article, and mm -hmm. she was like, oh, I got something even better for you guys to do. Mm -hmm. Let's go overseas. And I'm like, oh my, where are we going? Mm -hmm. So she mentioned Russia, she mentioned Ethiopia, mm -hmm. she mentioned some other f places, but Russia was the first place she sent us. Russia, now was that your choice or their choice? It was their choice. It was their choice. Was and their choice. where in Russia did you go? We went to Moscow, we went to St. Petersburg, and we went to Beauregard. Okay, I've been to St. Petersburg. Now, they, they got some athletes over there in Russia. Oh, yes, they, they do. do. Now, now how they receive, how they pick it up? But they, oh, they, they were so warm. Oh, my goodness. They, mm -hmm. It was almost like back here at home. But did they pick up the double dutch? Did y'all teach them? Like, we did. Did oh. they pick it up fairly easy, double dutch? Was they it, did. Like, easy thing for them they, to pick they up? They did. They were able to pick it up very well. But you know, I have a little technique to get everybody in my room. That's right. Yes, you <laughs> do. If you can teach Greg, you can teach anybody. <laughs> teach anybody. So, and while you were there, um, did you, anything interesting that you saw? Like, you, you said something that you went to an orphanage. Yes. We went to an orphanage where it was nothing but guys, boys, from the age of about 9 to 13, mm -hmm. maybe 15. But... It was about 35 guys, and mm -hmm. they all took double dutch and just didn't want to stop. They loved it so well. Did they, they easily could, pick it up? There were some who were kind of, you know, iffy about it, but the most, the majority of them picked it up fast. Boys tend to pick it up really fast. Boys, really? Tend, oh my gosh, yes, the boys oh, do very too. well. I mean, yeah, you know, you picked it up pretty quick. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, well, anybody, well, if you, like I said, if you could teach Greg, you can teach anybody, and you taught him fairly quickly. <laughs> um, so who all went over with you, to Russia with you? There were three other women. Mm -hmm. um, one of them being my sister, Carlisle Prince, mm -hmm. the founder, which is Joy Jones, mm -hmm. and one of the members who've been in, in, um, in our group since the conception, which is Myra mm -hmm. Martin. So it was four. Mm -hmm. And how long did you stay? We stayed there for 10 days. Oh, wow. my goodness. It was yeah. still wonderful. And what did y'all eat? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to stay away from their their food, which was like something that I've never heard yeah, of. Their no porridge. No, they there. didn't have no fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of ate vegetables a lot mm -hmm. and stuff that I knew that I liked. The stuff that you could recognize. Yes. Oh, did you eat the borscht? The borscht no, that's, the... yeah, that's what I, no, no, I didn't, you like, didn't like that. that. I didn't oh. like that. Borscht. Boy, that's a, it's a cold soup, it's like beet soup. Yeah. Oh, man, I don't 
don't sound del- delicious at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure it's an, it's an acquired taste, but it's, uh, it's you know. You ate it? I've had borscht, yes. I in St. Petersburg? Yes, I was there. Yes, Petersburg? I have. <laughs> But enough about me, enough about me. So um, even here in D.C., you guys have toured around a lot. You've been, you know, you've toured through the D.C. public uh, public library system, the Correct. P.D. public library system. Um, you uh, worked at v- various schools mm-hmm. like Excel Academy, um, John Tyler and school, and school within school on Capitol Hill. So, so you've pretty much gotten, gotten it out into the community. Do you still feel that, um, you know, more needs to be done, like not enough people know about absolutely, you. Absolutely, absolutely. Until mm-hmm. my kids understand what Double Dutch is, then I'll be happy, because right now they're still asking, what is Double Dutch, or mm-hmm. where did it come from? How do I do that? And once they see other kids do it, then they, they, they hooked on they hooked mm-hmm. on just like the rest of them. So where, um, like, where do you have plans to go? Does the embassy have plans to send you anywhere next year? Well, actually, or, they're looking mm-hmm. to send us soon, mm-hmm. yeah. And I'm not sure where to, mm-hmm. but yeah, we're looking to, to move again. Oh, so Travel. you guys are kind of ambassadors. Yes, now. yes, nice. yes, yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And um, so, but what are, what are your plans for like what's going on around here? Like what are your plans as far as expansion to other programs or what, what programs do you have in the works? Well, the library is keeping us very busy. Mm-hmm. So they, they're bringing us in at different locations just mm-hmm. to keep the, the, the Double Dutch alive in the, in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. But I pretty much, I, I want to get an adult Double Dutch team going mm-hmm. on or Double Dutch fitness class. That, mm-hmm. That's what a lot of the, um, the requests are mm-hmm. to do something with the adults or the teens. The teens don't seem like they want to, they, they're interested though. Really? Yeah. And that's sad because those are the ones who I really want to touch. Mm-hmm. I, I did a, um, I did a, um, I did a camp, a summer camp, mm-hmm. over at the Merrick Center, mm-hmm. and th- that was like high school students, mm-hmm. but they were so uninterested. <laughs> <laughs> they mm-hmm. they well, see, so I think the problem is you got to kind of got to get them young, and then as they move, and that's why you know, I stay. Keep them move on. So you, I guess the you know well you know they always talk about early intervention, early childhood education. Boom. <laughs> Try, uh, put it on you. You got to get an Instagram account. I, I have that. And then do a double Dutch challenge. Oh, oh, yeah, they have. Ooh. You know how like they have. They the, do anything in the, if it's on Instagram, they get in. And if it's okay. a challenge, they do it. I'ma do this that. Yes, the do double dust that. challenge. That's a good one, Greg. Hashtag <laughs> the double dust <laughs> challenge. There you go, Gregory. Go, yeah. Gregory. Hey, make right. sure you give him the credit for it. I though. will. I will. I will. <laughs> I'm gonna be another feather in my cap okay. on my way to legendary. I do it, legendary. So what are the um. What are your, you know, what do you see DC Retro Jumpers in the next uh, five years or so? I want us to have our own location, our own school. Mm -hmm. So if you want classes, if you want um, workshops, if you want Mm -hmm. um, just to learn how to turn or or learn how to jump, I want to be in one Mm -hmm. location where people can come to us. Or we, we'll still be able to, you know, travel outside. But I want, I want, I want an organization where, or building, or Mm -hmm. something where, where. Our, our people are right here in one place. Mm-hmm. And how also do you do you see yourself keeping the flying Nesbitt uh, legacy alive? Oh, I have a nine-year-old, so I'm gonna definitely keep that alive. She does a little bit of the gymnastics mm-hmm. that I do, but she knows about my dad. She knows about the history. She knows mm-hmm. so just to keep her in the, in my little circle as to knowing what I did as mm-hmm. as a kid, so that she won't just think that I'm just a, a regular little mom mm-hmm. that does nothing. Well, no, she knows that you do something. She knows you do double dutch. Yes, yes. <laughs> but are, are there any other flying Nesbits around? My sister is around. Oh, that's right. She's a flying Nesbit. Yes, but she any, is. outside of you and your sister? Th- there's several. There's several. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, I wanted one of my members to come and talk about my dad today, mm-hmm. but she was unable to. But mm-hmm. there, there are several that are still around and still talking about them and mm-hmm. that kind of thing, yeah. So is there anything like between you and your sister and the other, have, are you doing anything to help keep the legacy alive, to let more people know about it? Well, my dad was given the key to the city. Mm-hmm. So every May the 11th, which is his birthday, mm-hmm. I try to do something in, in reference to his name. Mm-hmm. So this May the 11th, I'll, it's on the weekend. Mm-hmm. So I'll try and do something in reference to either doing acrobatics or either doing the double dutch mm-hmm. and just um, mention it as his name. Mm-hmm. Now, um, Going down the stairs on his hands mm-hmm. was a great feat. Not many, I don't know if anybody else has ever done it or tried it. Uh, 
but surely not many people have. Right. What are some of the other things he's done you remember, one of some of the stunts that he's done that you remember, um, you know, that he was probably known for, probably not many people have done. Mm, good point. We have, a, we have a stunt that's called the flag, and that's when he stands up, somebody's on his, standing on his shoulders, mm -hmm. and he have two more people standing out, pushed out on the side. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a stunt that I have, I only see very few in the circus. So that was one of our our um, our, our stunts that we did. Oh, I think I know what you're talking Call about. Right. Said, and he said, and, but they're like um, their feet are on. Um, it's not on the ground. It's up in the air, right, so they're suspended. The oh, so he's just air. holding them suspended mm -hmm. like that. Yes. Talk about arm strength. Yes. That's like iron iron cross type of arm. Wow, strength. someone standing on the show. Yeah. And you know, in gymnastics, the iron cross is like the hardest thing you could do. Mm. Wow. Mm. Amazing. Yes. It is. That is. That <laughs> is. Because when I just thought about it, I was like, oh, snap. You like, hold. Yeah. That's, I mean, I'm just shocked over that just like that. Well, oh, my God. Time has really fly, flown. <laughs> I mean, what kind of stunt can I do? I don't know. Well, you know, how about not this? not many people that have done. Well, how about this? Here's our stunt. We're going to fly out of here. Because <laughs> <laughs> our time is up. We got to go out of here with me standing on your shoulder. No. Hold on, well, we going out of here because Miss <laughs> Ebb and her sister are going to, you know, give us a little demonstration. Well, you going to demonstrate something. Well, you know, I'm going to demonstrate how we going to go out this segment. <laughs> so, all right, so y'all stay tuned here because when we come back, you will be seeing a demonstration done by Miss Ebb and her sister for keeping the legacy of the flying Nesbitt alive. Looking pretty isn't a stunt, bro. You got to do something else besides <laughs> look pretty. We'll be back. Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. demonstration with Miss Robin Ebb and her sister. They're going to do a little demonstration, acrobatic demonstration for us. Are you ready to watch that? Yeah, I, I was interested in being an acrobat. I'm, I know I'm athletic enough, but uh, I'm going to watch that demonstration and, and see what else I can pick up. All right, well, let's go. All right, it's time for us to leave. <laughs> I'm an acrobat. Come on, Robin. Let, let me let me give some. Yeah, let me. Mm -hmm. See me running? I'm an acrobat.
was awesome demonstration. You did great. Hey, man, I love me some Robin. Robin said, anything Robin say do, I'm with it. You with it? Yeah. All right. Well, you know, I want to thank everybody for uh, watching the show today. I want to thank Miss Robin Ed for coming back, telling us what DC Virtual Jumpers have been doing, and also informing us about the flying lizards. Legendary. Put legendary on it. Yeah, put some respect on his name. Yeah, put some legendary <laughs> flying. Put some legendary on his name. So until next time, well, we'll see you all again later. On the wrong hair show.